from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, March the 7th, 2022. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett met with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow on Saturday to try and facilitate talks between Russia and Ukraine. Bennett told his weekly cabinet meeting yesterday of the trip, saying, I went there to assist the dialogue between all of the sides, of course, with the blessing and encouragement of all players. Bennett said of the efforts to help bring the sides to the negotiating table, we will continue to assist as needed, even if the chance is not great, as soon as there is even a small opening and we have access to all sides and the capability. I see this as our moral obligation to make every effort. As long as the candle is burning, Bennett said, we must make an effort and perhaps it will yet be possible to act. Bennett also spoke over the phone with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky after the Putin meeting. Meanwhile, a third round of talks between Russian and Ukrainian officials took place on the Belarus-Poland border today. Also at the cabinet meeting yesterday, Bennett addressed the Ukraine refugee crisis, which he said is a challenge for the state of Israel, but it is a challenge we have met in the past time and again. At such moments, he said, when the world is facing turmoil and Jews are no longer safe where they are, everyone is reminded how important it is that there is a home for Jews wherever they are, how important it is that we have the state of Israel. Hundreds of refugees arrived aboard three separate flights in Israel yesterday, many of whom Bennett greeted personally. Diaspora Affairs Minister Nachman Shai, meanwhile, flew to Poland today, where he will meet with a number of officials on the border with Ukraine, including Israeli, Polish, and Ukrainian ambassadors and Jewish and Israeli organizations working on the ground to get a better sense of the situation. Shai tweeted, the diaspora accompanies the Jewish community in Ukraine and neighboring countries. I come to send an unequivocal message. We are with you from a distance and even here in the field at any time. The people of Israel and the state of Israel support you. We all hope that this terrible war will end soon. Turning to some other news, two Israeli police officers were attacked today in Jerusalem's old city. Israel police tweeted that a terrorist recently arrived at the Cotton Gate, which is said to be near the entrance to the Temple Mount, in the old city of Jerusalem, armed with a knife and stabbed two policemen. The policemen responded by firing at him and he was neutralized. Medical officials, Israel police said, were treating the injured. One of the officers was said to be in moderate condition, the other in light condition. The office of Israel's president, Isaac Herzog, released an official statement this weekend about Herzog's long-reported trip to Turkey this month. The president's office said that Herzog and his wife, Michal, will depart this Wednesday, March the 9th, for the two-day trip at the invitation of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. During the visit, it wrote, the president will visit Ankara, where he will be received with a state welcoming ceremony at the presidential complex, and Istanbul, where he will meet members of the Jewish community. President Herzog, the statement noted, will be the first Israeli leader to visit Turkey since 2008. Herzog's office said that during the visit, the two presidents will discuss various bilateral issues, including Israel-Turkey relations and the potential for expanding collaboration between their respective states and peoples in various fields. Relations between Israel and Turkey have been strained for over a decade, and this visit is seen as a significant step towards the possible restoring of ties. Well, the 2021 Sylvan Adams Nefesh Benefesh Bonet Sion Prize recipients were announced today. The prize honors Olim, new immigrants to Israel from English-speaking countries who have made an impact on and contributed to Israeli society. They include Dr. Jonathan Reek, Director of Emergency Medicine at Barzillai Medical Center in the field of science and medicine, and Josie Katz, singer and actress in the field of culture, art, and sports. A Lifetime Achievement Award is going to Rabbi Dr. Daniel Tropper for his longtime work in Jewish education, including the establishment of Gesher, which fosters coexistence to strengthen and unify the entire Jewish people and nation.
Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Monday, March the 7th. At 7 o'clock, a briefing on the crisis in Ukraine, how it affects Israel, the Jewish community of Kharkiv, and more. It's from the Times of Israel's diplomatic reporter and IDF Oz Brigade Captain in Reserve, Laser Berman, who speaks from Lvov, Ukraine, with FIDF CEO Steve Weil. Then at 7.30, a look at rabbis and feminism. At 8, from the JBS studios in Times Square, Abigail Pogrebin is joined by Rabbi Sarah Hurwitz, Rabbani Devorah Lockauer, and Rabbi Dr. Aaron Lee Smokler, three leaders of Maharat, the revolutionary orthodox institution offering education for women seeking leadership roles in their communities in a special program for Women's History Month. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Klal leader Brad Hirschfeld on L'Chaim. At 10, it's a look at the films of Mel Brooks. And coming up next, Shahar Azani speaks with Abe Foxman, the Anti-Defamation League's National Director Emeritus, who talks about the current fight against anti-Semitism, the meaning and importance of the IHRA working definition of anti-Semitism, and the battle for and against it. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, March the 7th, 2022. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.